Hi everyone, this is Teacher Jane again and my topic for today is all about sequences. The examples that I'm going to use were lifted from the Mathematics 10, Quarter 1 Module, Week 1. This will be the goals for the day. We are going to determine what is a sequence. To differentiate a finite sequence to an infinite one. To determine what is the next term of a sequence. To determine the next term given the rule. And working backwards to determine the general rule given the sequence. So I hope you will find our topics for today very, very interesting. Okay, I'm going to show you that 11, 21, 31, 41 is an example of a sequence. So can you tell why? Well, obviously, if I'm going to list down 11, 21, and okay, so 11, 21, 31, 41, it follows a certain pattern that it increases by 10. So you have there a plus 10. Okay, so it is now a sequence. Now let's go to the second one. 1, negative 1, positive 1, negative 1 is also an example of a sequence. So can you tell why? Okay, so again it follows a pattern. So 1, negative 1, 1, the negative 1, 1 is multiplied to negative 1. So you get a negative 1 here. Again, negative 1 multiplied to negative 1. You get a positive 1 and multiplied again to negative 1. Okay, you get a negative 1. So again, there's already a specific order or a, a rule okay, to come up with the terms of this sequence. Now, let's show now a sequence. Okay, and this time these are shapes. So can you tell why? So we have here a rectangle. A is a triangle, then followed by a rectangle again, then a triangle. So it is a sequence. It follows again a certain order. So you have a rectangle, triangle, a rectangle, a triangle. So there is that alternating uh, order of the shape rectangle, triangle. And these are all blue shapes. So it means that we can tell that the next term or the next shape in this pattern would be a rectangle and then the next would be a triangle. So again, it follows a specific order. Okay, let us now define mathematically what is a sequence. Of course, we know already the definition of a sequence in English, but this time we are going to define it, okay, algebraically. So a sequence is a set of numbers, okay, written with specific order, okay, and that order, okay, can be named as a sub 1 followed by a sub 2, a sub 3, a sub 4, up until a sub n. Where a sub 1 is known as the first term of the sequence, and a sub n, okay, is the last term of the sequence. So, for example, I have here 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, a sequence that ends at 10. So, therefore, if we are to identify a sub 1, okay, this would be a sub 1 or the first term. So, I'll write here, that's your first term, okay? So, we have here a sub 1 is 2. And then, we have a last term here. Okay, that's the last term. Now, take note that not all sequences have last terms. So, in this example, it has a last term because it, it is um, indicated in the pattern that it ends at 10. So, we have an a sub n, which is equal to 10. And then n. So, what does n mean? n means the number of terms. So, I'll write here number of terms. So, in this case, we have an n because we have a first and a last term. Therefore, we can count 
Okay, the number of terms in this sequence. So, let's count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, there are 5 terms in this sequence. Okay, so therefore, that's the mathematical meaning of a sequence and all its parts. Now, can you tell the difference between these two examples of sequences? We have the first one, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13. And the next sequence is 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, and so on. Okay, well, obviously, okay, this right part is going okay on okay meaning it won't end so this has this is endless okay while the left side has an a sub one okay and it ends at 13 so we have an a sub n okay so that's the main difference of these two Okay, examples of sequences. The left, the left one ends at 13. The right example doesn't end because of the symbol. This is actually an ellipsis, meaning and so on. Okay, so the first example is called a finite sequence. So example, I have here 2, 6, 10, 14, Okay, and it doesn't contain the ellipsis, the and so on. It means it's a finite sequence. Therefore, it has an a sub 1, an a sub n, and it has an n. 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, so that's called a finite sequence. Next is an infinite sequence. So if I'm going to change now to 6, 10, 14, Okay, comma, dot, 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 three dots, a comma, then followed by three dots. It becomes now an infinite sequence wherein you only have the first term, which is two, this one. But we cannot tell the number of terms. It's infinitely going on. Okay, and we cannot tell our last term definitely because it keeps on going on. Unless you cut your sequence at a certain Okay, term meaning let's say you want to cut it only until 216 then you can have an a sub n okay so this is an infinite sequence so that's how we classify sequences we have the finite and the infinite now it's time for you to check your understanding so you have to classify a b c d e and so on whether it's a finite or an infinite sequence. Okay, go. Okay, very good. This one is okay, an infinite sequence. Okay, because it's not going to end and we cannot count the number of terms that it is composed of. Okay, let's move on to next one. 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2. It's a sequence that is decreasing. Okay, a decreasing sequence. So, is it a finite or an infinite? Okay, very good. It's a finite because we have our first term. A sub 1 is 7. And we have our A sub n which is 2. And it has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, we have 6 terms okay, in this sequence. So, I hope this is clear about classifying a finite to an infinite sequence. Now, let's move on now to finding now the terms given a rule. So, this is an example of a rule. A sub n is equal to n plus 2. So, you are given now a rule okay, and that and there stands for the terms okay so if you're asked to find the first three terms meaning okay you are looking for your a sub 1 a sub 2 and then a sub 3 so this is very very easy especially if you are already in grade 10 now all you have to do is to substitute for this n values here Okay, so these are the n values, the subscript. K 
okay, to the n variable in the rule. So that's our n variable. Okay, so we start first with solving a sub 1. So I have here, okay, let me write first the, uh, the formula is here. So therefore, we are just going to substitute for 1 here. So this becomes 1 plus 2. So this is now, so our n here is 2. So 2 plus 2. Then the n here for a sub 3 is 3. So you have 3 plus 2. Then let's generate now the first three terms having substituted for 1, 2, 3 as our n values. So you have 3, 4, and 5. So the answer to this question is write the first three terms using the formula a sub n equals n plus 2 would be the set of numbers 3, 4, and 5. Okay, let me change this into a set okay, set brace. Okay, so we have the answers 3, 4, and 5. Okay, let's have the next example of uh, how to generate again the terms given the rule. So we have now a new rule. A sub n is equal to 3n minus 4. And you're asked to solve for the first five terms. So we are solving for a sub 1, sub 2, sub 3, sub 4, and a sub 5. Okay. Later on, you are going to realize that there is no need actually to solve for the next terms using the formula because you can already notice that it has a particular pattern okay, or an order that it follows. So we have this formula 3 times n. So this is okay, the variable that we are going to substitute for 1. So we write here 3 times 1 minus 4. I'm going to list first. Okay, all our representations, okay, sorry, this is minus 4, minus 4, okay, minus 4, and minus 4, okay. So actually, once you realize that there is a pattern, you can actually stop up until A3. Okay, let's see, 3 times 1 is 3, minus 4 you have negative 1. 3 times 2 is 6 minus 4, you get 2. 3 times 3 is 9 minus 4, you get 5. Now, notice that our pattern here, obviously, is showing that you have to simply add 3 to get the next term. So, instead of doing 3 times 4, 12 minus 4 is 8. See? It's 8. Then I'm going to just add 3. This is supposed to be 11. 3 times 5 is 15 minus 4 is 11. So the answer to this question would be negative 1, 2, 5, 8, and 11. So those are the first five terms of this okay, rule. Now let's check now your understanding of the lesson which I gave you about finding the next terms okay, given a rule. So I have here a sub n is equal to 4 minus 2n. Can you tell the next five terms given this rule? Okay, go try it. So we are actually solving for the five terms. Okay, go ahead and work with this one and check if you are able to get the same thing as mine. Okay, so it's going to be 4 minus 2 times 1. Okay, notice that there's already a pattern. It is what? Okay, very good. It is decreasing by 2. So the pattern is it is subtracting or decreasing by 2. So this becomes negative 
4. Next is negative 6. Okay, I hope you're able to get the same answer as mine. Okay? Now, let's move on now okay, to the last part, which is quite, um, it's already level up of this topic. Okay. So, what is a general rule? A general rule is actually a formula okay, to generate all the terms of a given sequence. So, it means a general rule makes, okay, makes your sequence true. So, since it's general, it means once you use this formula, you have to arrive at the correct uh, terms of the given sequence. So, this time we're going to do backwards. Okay, what do I mean by that? Okay, I have here now the sequence 2, 4, 6, 8. Okay, obviously, we know that the next term here is 10, right? And it will be followed by 12, okay? Because it is increasing by 2. But the question here is, what is now the rule, okay? What is the rule of this sequence? So, you are going to come up now with the general rule or the formula. So, you are going to solve for what should be its a sub n okay will be equal to one so i'm going to give you time to find out what would be the rule of this sequence okay remember this is your a sub one a sub two a sub three and a sub four there is actually a relation to n okay n to your value here okay can you see now okay very good so most of you answered that a sub n is equal to twice of n okay so this is now the rule for the sequence so the rule for the sequence 2 4 6 8 would be a sub n equals to n now let's use this rule so let's try with a sub 1 so we have 2 times 1, a sub 2, 2 times 2, a sub 3, 2 times 3, and a sub 4, you have 2 times 4. Now let's generate now the answers 2, 4, 6, and 8. Okay, therefore the general rule a sub n equals 2n is indeed the general rule to generate okay, the terms 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, and so on. So that's how to work backwards given now the sequence. So if you have questions about our topic okay, and you have concerns, you can actually write your comment okay, below below my ano, below my channel okay and then if you want to learn more please click subscribe okay and then click the notification bell so that you get to be updated with my new videos with that goodbye i hope that you learned something today